sanctuary and host the scheme as well. So those kids that we work with, they are from Eritrea, they are combined children. What they experienced was is, is just unbelievable because I myself, I have a child, 16 years old, she never experienced nothing. But when the kids, I just asked them to come today and to see what we can do. And they said, oh, who organized this? Is there a Eritrean community? I said, no, there's no Eritrean community. This is a British community. Everybody, everybody in Oxford and Oxfordshire organized it. And they were really overwhelming when they see it. said, oh gosh, we have a lot of people just supporting us. So I would like to thank you on behalf of them, on behalf of Eritrean society, that's on behalf of Eritrean community they die on the sea and the Mediterranean and Eritrea that they experienced it, all the difficulties. And I would like to thank you from my bottom of my heart. This is really, really a miracle. Thank you. <laughs> We've heard from one MEP, we must hear from the other. Um, Annalise, uh, your Labour MEP here for the South East, so just a quick word please. Thank you very much. I'm afraid there's not just us two, you also have Nigel Farage in this region and a number of other UK MEPs, sadly. Uh, I wish they were here to see all of you. I think that would teach them quite a lesson about public opinion. But I really don't want to speak for too long. I absolutely agreed with the first speaker when he said politicians have been wringing their hands on this for far too long. And quite frankly, many of the upset people we've seen on our TV screens have been crying crocodile tears. Because this crisis did not just happen this month. This crisis has been going on for months upon months. As soon as I was elected last year, last summer, talking to one of my Maltese colleagues, she, like me, has got a young son, and she was in tears. She was telling me about the people that she had seen back then, last year, who had been washed up on the shores of Malta. We knew about that problem then. We've had no action until now, and we still don't have enough action. So let's talk about what we need to do. I know that all of you here have already committed to supporting refugees. Many of you are doing amazing things. We've heard from foster carers, we've heard from the charities, but what do the politicians need to do? Well, the first thing we need to do is we need to accept we're no longer an island that can cut itself off from the rest of the world, stick our fingers in our ears and wish everyone would just go away. with other countries on this crisis. And it's simply not good enough to hear our politicians saying in power time and time and time again, yes, we'll do it our own way. We'll do it the British way. Well, I'm sorry, that just simply doesn't work. We've got to work with other countries on this issue. We've got to work with the European scheme. We've got a vote in the European Parliament next week, a vote about whether MEPs support the EU with its emergency measures to help Italy and Greece with all the refugees who are already there. I'm proud that I'm going to be supporting that measure, even though my government has opted out of that scheme. I'm ashamed that they have, but I'm proud that I'm standing up for what's right, and I hope you will all support those emergency measures. last thing that I want to say is about the people who aren't here. Because I agree with what many have said, that yes, David Cameron is starting to listen now. But unfortunately, if he looks at the opinion polls, he still sees there's about a third of people in the UK who are like us, who accept we've got to take people in, we've got to offer them some security. There's about a third of people who think there are already enough people here and there are a third of people who think there are already too many people here. So as well as what you're already doing, please, please talk to your neighbours, talk to your workmates, talk to your friends and say to them, as I have felt so many times, it could have been us, it could have been our family, it could have been our child who was washed up on the shores of Turkey. We've got to change their minds and then finally David Cameron might listen to us and we might start to have the long-term solution to this crisis that we need. Well done again to all of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
to the Conservatives. Um, I haven't had a response from our MP Nicola Blackwood or from any other Conservatives. I, <laughs> I didn't offer this to UKIP, so. But what we, we do have Sashila Dahl here, um, who's uh, chairman of the Green Party here, and I think whose job is to work with refugees. Please welcome Sashila. It's nice to stand up here and see everybody. I also didn't know there would be so many people here. I'm not chair of Oxfordshire Green Party, I'm ex-chair of Oxfordshire Green Party and an active member and I work for Refugee Resource. And what I want to say today is, we can welcome refugees and asylum seekers and that will be fantastic, but we do need to lead the way because our Home Office does not welcome asylum seekers. When asylum seekers come to the UK, they walk straight into a culture of denial and they often have to wait for years, if not decades, during which time they are not allowed to work, not allowed to claim benefits, not allowed to live anywhere. They starve on our streets and are homeless. And at Refugee Resource, we try to keep them alive long enough to get their claim heard and to be allowed to stay here. So we need to help people who have nowhere to live and nothing to eat. People could be dead on the streets of Oxford, not just on the shores of Turkey, every winter if we don't help. So please, if you can't help by offering a room, do give money to Asylum Welcome or to Refugee Resource. Do talk to people, help people to be educated, and do let David Cameron know that he needs to change the culture of denial in the Home Office that we all pay for. If we can't show humanity, we lose our own humanity if we cannot recognize the humanity of others. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks, Shashina. Um, Actually, I've just been told that we have a message from uh, the uh, Labour MP, Andrew Smith. Is that right, Wayne? Can you read that out? Okay, okay. So this is a message sent by Andrew Smith. Please convey a strong message of support and solidarity to the demonstration today. I am unable to be there because I was already committed to visiting a riding centre for local disabled children this afternoon. I believe Britain has a clear moral duty to take significantly more refugees. I am heartened by the hundreds of emails and letters I have received from constituents urging the government to do more. I have received more representations on this in the last few days than on any issue ever. Isn't that amazing? The politicians shouldn't be touting for the UKIP vote, they should be touting for you lot. Yeah. He goes on to say, I have already written to the Prime Minister to take this up. A year ago I questioned in the Commons the criteria the government were using to admit Syrian refugees and I campaigned for action to stop refugees drowning in the Mediterranean. We can and must do so much more to help our fellow human beings fleeing real horror and in need of sanctuary. I will work with city and county council and local support organisations to ensure the people of Oxford can play our part in rising to this challenge and providing the practical support refugees need. The plight of those fleeing terror and persecution touches our hearts and demands action. With the strength of support being shown today, we can make a real difference 
and bring hope and help where there was despair. Thank you all. Thank you. Now, we're all going to... We're all going to continue to work together, right, on this? Yeah. Yes? So I, I don't know how many of you came here via the Facebook event page. I'm going to try to convert it into a Facebook group. Um, if I fail, will you join the Facebook group from the start, please? Yeah? And then we'll post on there all of the useful links, all of the relevant information you need, so that we can continue to practically make this Welcome for Refugees happen. Um, I want to, well, it'll be called... Uh, refugees welcome Oxford yeah so go home and Google that in about three hours now um, a, a couple of thank yous I really want to thank um, the local health branch of Unison um, for providing us with this fantastic PA without which I have to say none of this would have happened um, Ian a quick word yes yeah, so let's bring the uh, so <laughs> Solidarity greetings um, from, uh, from the health workers uh, in Oxfordshire, uh, many of whom are, are, are migrant workers, come from all over the world to look after the sick and the, um, uh, the, you know, the, uh, the poorly here. Uh, we are currently 20,000 nurses too short in the country. Um, I'd be very happy to see 20,000 Syrians being given jobs here straight away. It's a bit sad, really, that um, the government doesn't actually want to train nurses. They'd rather steal nurses from other countries that have trained them so they don't have to spend, um, um, to spend money here. Um, it costs about £40,000 to train a nurse. They, they just don't want to spend the money, so they're robbing them from the Philippines, etc. Uh, but then they're telling them, well, if you don't earn £35,000 after six years, you can get out. Well, that's not good for us, is it? That's not good for our health service. It's absolutely cruel to people who've uprooted. So what I do want to say, though, is I think... You know, the mood on the ground is absolutely fantastic right across Europe. Um, you've, you've changed public opinion at the moment. You've got the right on the back foot. And I think we have to absolutely ram that advantage home because they are not going to give up. David Cameron wants to turn the sentiment into a bombing campaign. He wants to say the solution to the refugee crisis is to actually bomb ISIS in Syria. He wants to, you know, twist the support there. We have to absolutely reject that. We have to say... And I think it's absolutely fantastic to hear all the politicians now saying uh, we, need to, we need to do something about refugees. But uh, sorry, but on the run-up to the election, all I heard was racist tribe, a racist competition about who could kick migrants and refugees the most, who could be the most despicable and cruel to them. And I think they're going to try and turn it back, so I think we have to keep up the pressure. And there is an issue with housing. There's a massive housing crisis in this country. We need to solve that. We need to solve it for the domestic population because it's all right winning the battle of ideas, but if you're sat in the council house, if you are homeless, or if you're sat in a, with your children in a bed sit, and you've just been discharged from hospital, and you've nowhere to go, and your home's been repossessed, and then you hear Nigel Farage going, well, it's immigrants that are the problem, you're going to fall for that idea. We need to have a proper house building program. That's what we need, and we need to tax the rich to do it. And we want to know, what kind of rescue operation that can be mounted, I would draw your attention to the banking collapse in 2007 where they rescued the international banking system, where this government spent £1.2 trillion to save the rich. Well, now it's time to save the refugees. <laughs> on, October, on next Saturday, there's a National Day of Action Oxford's leading the way, the National Day of Action for the refugees. We're going to see this mood replicate across the country, but I think we need to turn up at the Tory party conference on October the 4th. We've got coaches paid for by the unions going up there to say no more austerity, no more racism against migrants. We want tens of thousands of people outside that. We had a quarter of a million people in June. We want half a million outside the Tory party conference. Let's pin this mood to the ground and say if you want Jake Cameron, you can get it lost. Thanks, Ian. You don't need a PA. Um, we're going to finish with a song, okay? Are you all feeling like singing along? Yes? So, um, so I'm going to hand you over to the Sea Green Singers here. Yeah? 
Hi, we're members of Oxford Sea Green Singers. We're a choir that sings about social justice and the environment. And we'd like to share a song with you today about a refugee called We Want Rosa to Stay. And we're not going to sing at you. We're going to sing with you. So we're going to teach you the chorus. So it's We Want Rosa to Stay. We Want Rosa to Stay. We want Rosa to stay, not just today or tomorrow, but forever. So we will sing it through once to give you the tune, and then we want you to try and join in. Okay? Just let me do that. We want Rosa to stay. We want Rosa to stay. We we want Rosa to stay, not just today or tomorrow, but forever. I know you join in. We want Rosa to stay. We want Rosa to stay. We want Rosa to stay, not just today or tomorrow. But forever. Brilliant. And once we're on, then we'll start into the song. <laughs> we want Rosa to stay. We want Rosa to stay. We want Rosa to stay. Not just today or tomorrow. Rosalita, well I know your name I've learned to pronounce it again and again For I got to know you and I know you well So I don't believe all the tales that they tell No, I don't believe Rosalita's a threat Or that she's a strain on the national debt For Rosa has spirit and courage and all To brave every ocean Resources intended for me, and the rich men in mansions say that's why I'm poor, but I don't remember being wealthy before. We want Rosa to stay. 